Okay. So. Uh, Hello, before everyone. Start, sorry, before we start, please, all of you, uh, close your microphone and uh, let's have uh, fun today in the first session of BCAP. Three. Maho, please. Yeah. So, hello everyone. I'm Muhammad Hassan from Mom. Lebanon, a student in grade 11. And today is my pleasure to be a, uh, the host, your host in IIU BICAP, um, the biggest interactive knowledge exchange program. As you know, our motto is involve yourself and your students and empower them because BICAP is a program to grow up leaders for the future. What a nice pleasure to meet you all again. As you have already been informed, the format of the program is different. I want you to be delighted with the choice of the organizing committee. We will have a total of six sessions, apart from the first and last, which will be different. Only seven teams will present in each session and the other seven will present in the next session because of time issues. The presentation can be in any form decided by the team. It can be a PowerPoint, a video, of a, you can present photos, speech, anything you want. Each time we'll, ha we'll have 10 minutes to present and you can decide if you will choose a leader to present you or uh, you, will, um, you will present all as a team each part of the presentation. Yeah, and uh, this note is very important that the role of the teacher in each team is to help the students to support and motivate them, but never ever criticize them. So um, let's before we start, let us watch a short video about BICUP3. So nice. So, um, and now uh, it gives me a pleasure to invite the first bike team to present their work to us. Let's welcome to the virtual stage, uh, Voyage the Universal, please. Hello. Hey. I have to ask you, hey uh, Ermina, did, did everything go okay? Sure. I will do this. Everyone, can you please share them and uh... please? Uh, okay. It's okay. Wait, let me see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just a sec. Okay, wait, this, yeah. So, 
today we're speaking about heritage. So please can go to the first slide. Okay, so a country's heritage is all the qualities, traditions, or features of life there that have been continued over many years and have been passed from, from one generation to another. Everything related to tradition, tradition, values, food, historical places, restored festivals, music, dances, clothes, etc., is considered as heritage of country. Now for the Lebanese the heritage, I have to ask Zainab, uh, Zainab ID to continue. Okay, where's Zainab? Zainab, can you please continue? I think she's not there. Can you please present Maybe you can the continue till, she, till she's here? Uh, no one from my team is here. Can you please present at the end because uh, nor Zainab or, or Yusuf is here, just me. I'm here, I'm here. Okay, but we need Zainab. Can you please present at the end? Uh, my part is Indonesian, right? Ms. Ermi Muhammad, can you please present at the end? Sure, I will present. Lebanon has a very, um, has a heritage almost as old as the earliest evidence of manking, Lebanon has an Arab culture colored by Western influences. At different periods of its history, Lebanon has come under the domination of Fergian rules, including Assyrians, Babylonians, Persian, Greeks, Romans, and Ottomans. Even after everything, Lebanon has preserved most of its heritage and protected it over the years. Oh, so nice. Um, tradition, values, Lebanese people have been known to be very um, hospitable. They want to wait uh, Zainab Aydibi to join. Maybe she can present that. Uh, great, so. great. So I want the teams uh, uh, present. We can present at the end because maybe Zainab has a problem in uh, internet right now. So we can present at the end, please. Okay, okay, no problem. So um, maybe you can present at the end, no problem. Uh, Sergeant's teams, are you ready? Uh, Muhammad, please just give me also some time. Okay, so who is ready to present? Anybody is ready? Um, yes, I am. Yes, Why sir, not? please. Unify, uh, the team is Unified Minds, right? Yes, please yes, present. True, true. Um, so we will talking about uh, management essentials. I'll be sharing a video. Uh, it basically uh, demonstrates the uh, essentials of management and how it's beneficial and uh, effective. So hold on just one second. Okay. One second, just let me share the screen. Yeah. Um, okay, the screen, sure. Hold on. Okay. Um, here it is. Uh, if there is sound, we cannot hear the sound. Yes, we can't hear the sound. Oh, you can't, you can't hear the sound? Can we yes. share with you the video? Yes. Oh, hold on a second. Maybe uh, I can send the video to someone so uh, 
Uh, I'm going to start with uh, Miss Corina, so she can uh, present. Uh, she can present if that is okay. going to be helpful. Okay. I'll... Okay, so I'll send the video. Okay. Wait. Uh, here it is. Okay. I'll send it on the group. And here it is. I did. I sent the degree. Yes. Okay, let me set. Oh, okay. No worries. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I want to congratulate you, Sai, for your great work. I really like it. I'm honored. Oh, it's amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sai. Um, uh, maybe I can now. It's my pleasure to invite the next team. Um, Sergeant's team, are you ready? Sergeant's team. If they are ready, I would like to congratulate uh, uh, this team. And I would like to ask you all, because you are working very hard for uh, your presentations, for the, what you did today. When you start, don't matter which team you are, please introduce yourself. The people who are working on this um, presentation, this video, okay? Because uh, we would like to hear about you, who you are, uh, your names, uh, where you are from, and the name of your team. And of course, I would like uh, all of you to share with us your presentation at the end with me personally, because I want to keep, and who knows, 
maybe in the future we can do something more. Thank you. Here's my hope. I believe Mahomet has no uh, internet. Are you there, Maho? Can you hear me? Yes, I think um, Sarah is from Teams 13 and uh, uh, he has a member named mm -hmm. Aya, but um, she had exams, so she couldn't prepare with him. He was the only active um, member in this team with uh, Ms. Mahesh Hadi and Mr. Erwin. So I want you to congratulate this team for uh, it's a great work. Yes, wonderful. So, Thanks. I want to invite a team, but I really don't know who is ready. I thought you're all prepared. <laughs> so um, uh, there are some teams who told me that they can join until four, so I can't uh, invite them now. The um, who can invite are the chiefs. The chiefs, are you there? You are muted, no. Yes, we are here, the chiefs. Great. Okay. Please introduce your team or ask your teacher to introduce you. Yeah, our teacher is uh, Mr. Yuda. Okay. He's here, I think. Yes. And the students? Who are your mates, Noor? Who is working with you? Um, Ghadir Akush and Molka Salim. And Thank our you. boss is the teacher as well. Um, I want to note that Molka Salim uh, joined yesterday because I got her number so far, not uh, not from the so time ago. So she can't you can show us your us. you can show us your presentation, please. Yes, but but we need Radir also before starting. Where is Radir? As she's present here. Oh, he's here, as <laughs> you see. We can start our introduction. Yes, please. Okay. Only a second here. Just one minute. Uh -huh. So mainly our topic is about lifestyle. Yes. Yeah. And uh, to start with, one of the most important things to avoid being ill is to have an active life. So people are less active today than they used to be with the television, computers, and video games, filling their spare time. Besides, only a few people walk or ride their bikes. They mainly use their cars to get to any place. Healthy living also means like having a healthy habits, like going to bed early, being Why? close to nature Why? whenever Why? possible and keeping fit. Um, however, people are busier today. Therefore, most times the only exercise they get is running to catch the bus or walking up and down school stairs. Yes. Yeah, so many of us are frustrated by forgetfulness are unaware that the lifestyle choices we make day to day affect how we perform at work and at home. Yet there is overwhelming evidence that many factors we deal with daily, such as fatigue, diet, or emotional distress can really lower our memory potential. This presentation identifies lifestyle factors that matter to memory and gives practical, actionable tips that put us back in charge of our brain health. 
Um, Radir can start, I guess, now. I think she's good. Radir, you can start sharing your ideas with us. <laughs> What's happening? Okay, steps to make a healthy life start. First of all, pamper yourself. There may be plenty of manner to pamper yourself. However, one suggestion is to get rub uh, down once or twice a month. This improves muscle functions and circulate, and it's able to additionally assess to unblock emotional trauma in the body. Noor? Yes, I was muted my microphone. Yeah, so um, to start leading a healthy lifestyle, we're gonna start by workout routines, doing yoga, yoga, cardio, swimming, biking, and energetic walking. We can connect to our bodies and experience our power. This connection offsets that disconnected experience that happens within dependency. Doing badly sports activities lets in us to also hook up with other human beings in particular training, which could depose of the sensation of isolation and loneliness. Okay, consume properly. Frequently time with you for empty cal calories, which can be emotionally driving. That could bring about binging on comfort meals, being ingesting horrific food, and so then the, the numbing of your feelings, while making sober, sober or, and healthy alternatives in preference to eating reactivity, reactively. We will choose to say hi to stay hydrated with juice, water, consuming clean protein, salads, healthy carbs. Ingesting clean, might, uh, ingesting clean might also need to mean that you are feeling emotionally stronger. Noor? Noor? Yeah. Maybe you can continue with the other little Noor comes. Is it able to? But did you work out routines? Doing yoga, cardio, swimming, biking, and energetic and energetic walking, we can connect to our to our bodies and a connection of that that connected experience that happens with dependency. Dependency. Doing bodily sports activities lets lets in us to also hook up with other human beings, in particular training which could dispose of the sensation of isolation of isolation and no lines. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Okay, great, great. Thank you so much. Um, amazing presentation with you both. I want to congratulate you. Um, let me now uh, call the next team who is the pioneers. Are you there, the pioneers? Yes, we are. Great. The stage Just is joined. You. Hello, everyone. Hello, Angela and the others. Hello, Muhammad. 
I'm so sorry for being late. I've just finished my session and I'm here now. Great, great. Nice to see you, Ms. Patul. Thank um, you. The stage is yours, the pioneers. Maybe you can introduce yourself by first and let's start. Okay, so uh, this is our team. And um, okay, Khudud, you could start sharing. Khudud, can you start sharing? Yes, please, can you start? You may start. Okay, Muhammad, if you please, can you move to another team because uh, Khulud is not ready? Uh -huh. Angela. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay, not a I problem. Think that, I think the sharing is not working with Khulud. So she has a problem because she's using her phone. Oh. Um. Uh, maybe I could uh, try. Can to you share? Uh, okay. Sure. Wait. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so uh, let other group start. Meanwhile. Okay. Voyage the Universal, are you ready now? Maybe um, super speakers, please. Yes, okay, we're ready. Are yes. you ready, team super speakers? Okay. Yeah, of course. Yes. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Mm, a oh. minute. Black, but yes. But okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, first of all, hello everyone. I'm Zainab Arzune, a 16 year old Lebanese student. So we are team 11, the super speakers. As you can see, we are led by Ms. Laura Stanchu from Romania. I'm Zainab Arzuni from Lebanon. We have Malak Azadin from Lebanon, Jason Rarank from Philippines, Raisa Nico from Philippines. And today we're, we will be presenting an uh, inclusion of students with a special need in mainstream schools. So we'll prove to you that we must be different and uh, being different doesn't mean that you have to be treated differently. And now let's keep up with the Jason. So good day, everyone. So by the way, my name is Jason Arang and I will be your team 11 first presenter, presenting the introduction and description of our topic entitled inclusion of students with special needs in mainstream school. So according to UNESCO, any child may experience a special need during the course of educational years, some children feel left out and never enter school or enter only for a few years. And as repeaters, become dropouts or more correctly push out without their needs having been met. These children are a vivid yeah. illustration of the failure of schools to teach rather than pupils failure to learn. A school system emphasizing education for all should ensure the right of all children to a meaningful education based on individual needs and abilities. With so many needs and learning styles to manage, how can early childhood education professional meet the needs of all education they deserve? Inclus inclusive education is one of the solutions to this dilemma. So what is inclusion? When we talk about inclusion in education, is when the student with special needs spend most or the whole of their time with the non-special needs students. So furthermore, inclusion is the universal human right. And it, and it is a new approach towards educating the children with a disability and learning difficulties with the, the normal ones within the same group. In other words, this is a real concept of education for all. Another, inclusion in education, it is about giving equal access and opportunities for all students and to cope with intolerance and discrimination. So this is about as a learning environment that promotes that full personal 
academic and professional development of all learners, irrespective of race, class, color, gender, disability, sexual preference, learning style, and language. So remember, in inclusion in education, define as accept differences and elaborate diversity. Disability is a social responsibility and make provision and not restriction adjust the needs of a child. So Ms. Reina will be the next presenter. Go ahead. Thank you. Just a what happened? Okay, just a second. I'm sorry, I just faced a technical I just faced again a technical problem. No problem, no problem, Tina. Okay. So before we we uh, we head deeply into our topic, let's differentiate between exclusion and inclusion. So exclusion seems to be like this. As you can see, all people uh, like uh, feel to be the same. All people pretend to be the same and to be alike and to have the same passion. And uh, I think that uh, exclusion includes racism, sexism, culturism, ageism, classism, and a lot of others that differentiate between people, that discriminate, that separate people. But inclusion seems to be like this, where everyone has to have his, his own color. Everyone, whether it has a special need or non-special need, he's living his own life with his own personality and not pretending to be other. And I think that inclusion just is not, not just between special need students and general students, because as you can see nowadays, there is racism between because of race, because of color. Uh, like you may see classes that doesn't accept uh, black people or maybe white people. So I believe that inclusion is, is emerging the whole world. So as you can see here, all people are white, all people are the same, but there is just this one rainbow uh, human, I'll say, and he has his own style and he wants to share his own personality and he doesn't want to, to look like others. He wants to be unique as himself. And now let's see why we're different. But before we ask ourselves why we're different, we have to ask that why we're similar, because we're similar. We're all human. We all have the same organs, the same function. We all act, we act. We, like, we all have the same perspectives of life. But imagine this banana, okay? So do you think that we're similar to banana? So probably and obviously you'll say no. But actually, we're living things, and a banana it's a living thing. It is a, it's a living thing, and we share fifty percent of our DNAs with the banana. Then, how many DNAs we share with people? Actually, we are all here in the meeting. We share ninety-eight percent of our DNAs with others. So when you see a special needs student, you share with him or her. 98% percent of your DNA, DNA. So we just have this two percent of our DNAs that differentiate us from others and let us to be unique and to shine our unique with them. And you know what? Imagine we're all the same. We're all with the same passion. Then we we will maybe be all nurses, or we will be all doctors, or we will be all entrepreneurs or teachers or clean workers. But we have to know that we have to be different in order to have nurses, in order to have doctors, because you know, doctors can't function without nurses. Doctors and nurses can't function without entrepreneurs because entrepreneurs build and sketch for them that hospital. And doctors, and you, you won't find qualified doctors without teachers. And thus you won't find clean uh, schools and hospitals without clean workers. Thus, we have to be different in order to have different passions, different perspectives, 
and different jobs and uh, occupations in order to complete each other. Then we have to be all immersed in order to complete the perspectives of life, in order to complete life fields. So this is what inclusion looks like. And now let's keep up with Rise Up from Philippines. Hi, I'm, hi, I'm Rise Up from Philippines and I'm gonna talk about the history of inclusion for special needs students. In the early 1800s, students with special needs didn't receive education. In 1850, they had isolated isolated schools with specialists. In 1920s, they had the right to join general schools, but in a separated classes. Since 1975 and now, general schools accomplished partial and fully and full inclusion. Globally, the term inclusion was used in the special education context for the first time in the Salamanca Statement in 1994, wherein it was exclusively stated that the integrations of children with disabilities could be possible to inclusive schools. Okay, thank you, Raisa. Okay, and now let's head to the benefits of inclusion. So uh, let's start with the benefits of inclusion for students with a special needs. Inclusion will develop for them positive peer interactions because they will get the chance to involve with the students and with general students. So they will feel that they are worth, they will feel their value, they will feel that they are normal human. Second, they will develop career and social skills because nowadays, like, you rarely see a, a special needs student working, you know? So by inclusion, we develop for them career and social skills in order to have occupation, in order to know how to cope with other people, with other people that doesn't have disabilities. And next, it, uh, inclusion develops for them communication and increases their self-esteem. And as I said before, as it en enhances their career and social uh, skills, they will when they interact with others they will have a uh, high self-esteem you know because they will think that they are valuable and they are worth it and they can cope with the world and next for for non-special needs students they will know how to cope with the special needs people you know i i believe that this is a skill to cope with people with a special need like no one can do it like if I didn't have that experience, I want I can't do it. Like imagine you're you're not special needs student and you grew up, you got married, and you had a child with a special need, you know, and you know nothing about inclusion, you know nothing about special needs students or special need people. How could you react with this child? How could you raise this child? Even if you get lectures, this won't be enough unless you have experience with your friends. And the last one, it will develop for non-special needs people, the values. You will learn how to help others. You will, you will gain this value of helping others. You will know how to respect others, regardless of their diversity, color, race, or whatever uh, there is. And you'll learn how to love and care others uh, about others that are from different diversities. diversities. Like for example, this bucket meeting is, inclu is an inclusion uh, for me because we're here from different diversities. We speak different languages, but the English language is emerging us here. And now here's the most important point, how to develop inclusive classrooms. And please pay attention. Uh, so this point is for all teachers, you know? So first you have to develop equitable education. And by equitable education, we mean justice. You know, this picture tells everything. On the, on the right, you see equality. Everyone gets his right with a one box, you know, but it's not fair. It's not fair for the little child. But on the other hand, you see equity, where everyone gets what's fair for him. So the child gets two boxes because he's, he's short. 
and the old man he's tall so he get no boxes so so uh, here's uh, what's the equitable uh, education there are some students that need more attention that need to uh, reteach them and there are students that okay get it th get the lesson from the first explanation jason Thank you. So diversity of strategies. So diversity is defined broadly and refers to the range of similarities and differences of the individual. So this includes national origin, language, race, color, disability, ethnicity, gender, age, religion, sexual orientation, gender identity, social economic status, veteran status, and family structure. So diversity and inclusion have long been recognized as a critical in K-12 schools and higher education. So schools should be inclusive and diverse if students are to receive the best educational outcomes. It is essential for educational equity, inclusion and diversity are challenging and require a great deal of commitment and specific strategies. So a series of specific and practical strategies that can be implemented that can build inclusion and diversity in the classroom and school are, first is inclusion, inclusive education classroom student with special needs receive an individual educational plan. It tailored to their unique learning goals. This can take the form of ongoing conversation on where to sit the child and ensure they are not segregated, but part of the class to giving the student extra work or modified work to meet the child's specific needs. Second, schools should support students in their learning of important life skills. To so often many disadvantaged students lack basic skills such as note-taking or cursive writing. These are often not evaluated in, in, is in standardized tests, but can help students from disadvantaged background to excel in the everyday classroom. And third, the increased collaboration. Teachers have a myriad of skills and area of expertise. If they, if they continuous collaborate, they can share their knowledge and expertise. For example, teacher with a variety of live experience can share their knowledge and perspective with the colleagues. <clears throat> In this way, teachers are better able to support children from a wide diversity of background and with the particular challenges. Okay. So Jason shed the light on uh, developing also collaborative and communicative uh, cl classrooms and to support all students. And the next and the last point. And the last point is co-teach or co-plan. So every classroom must require two teachers, one for a special needs students and the other for general students. So thus, there will be variable presentations. And, uh, you know, if, if the special needs students didn't get the lesson from the, the general teacher, they will get it from their specialist. And now here are some instructions and tips in order to develop an inclusive classroom. You know, it's a bit informative, but there are really valuable informations. So first, try to use functional skills, like just uh, not just use numbers on the board and numbers on calculators and, you know, iPads. Try to use such uh, functional skills like, uh, like you know, uh, two apples plus two plus three apples give five apples. Try to vary presentations, as we said before, like co-teach, lead to, var uh, to varying the presentations. Right. Thus, special needs students uh, have another way in, uh, in, getting, the, in getting the information. And uh, tr try to have supplementary materials, such as calculators, such as some uh, toys that can help in, in the educational skills. And try to pre-teach and reteach. You know, especially there are some special students that can't take the lesson and understand it from the first time of teaching. So you have to revise it for them once and another. Jason. So have an individual goal. So obviously, teachers should have an objective to ensure the needs of students in inclusive education. So next avoid gender or parental stereotypes. So disability may be visible or hidden permanent or temporary and may have a minimal or substantial impact 
on a person's disability. So disability may affect mobility, the ability to learn, or the ability to communicate easily. So never make assumption about what a person with a disability can or cannot do on the basis of their disability. So stereotypes are used by all of us every day in all sorts of situations, including differences. It is important to be aware of the stereotypes we hold and appreciate what some of our personal biases be they conscious and unconscious. So next, discuss all types of families. So student family structures may vary now perhaps more than ever before. It's therefore important for teachers to be inclusive of all types of families when it comes to communication, assignments, and many other aspects of classroom life. So diverse family structures can include single parents, foster parents, adoptive parents, blended, unmarried biological parents, or poly, or poly, uh, sorry, uh, polyamorous parents or LGBT parents, non-parents, relatives, guardians, grandparents, or aunts, or etc. So no matter the types of family, students do best when educators remain sensitive to and welcoming of these differences. Acceptance by both ad adults and classmates at school contributes to students' social, emotional well-being, which we know positively impacts their academic achievement. And last, they acknowledge different words or terminologies some students may with bar, may with their family. Next. Okay, thank you, Jason. So now, inclusion is about engaging everyone. Especially the students, we, can, we can't call them disabled because I believe everyone has a special talent. If I have an ability you don't have, you have abilities I don't have, they have abilities I don't have, and I have abilities they don't have. So I can't call them disabled. What's happening? <laughs> Like my laptop went on crazy. I'm so sorry. Okay. <laughs> Don't worry, Zainab. It happens with us all the time. Yeah, because uh, I, I think that uh, I'm a co-host and uh, there are a lot of people admitting. So uh, the laptop is <laughs> went on crazy. And now here's an inclusion story for you. So it's, it's real. So to go further, Four years ago, when I was in grade seven and eight, I had a special need friend. He has some difficulties in understanding the lessons rapidly as we do. I mean to understand equational, mathematical, and structural subjects. So he got uh, bullied and criticized by all my friends and teachers, unfortunately. But actually, he had a special ability. He got a feed on history. You know, he memorized the world's history with the specific details. Like we couldn't do that. You know, like if you don't know in Lebanon, this history subject is really tough. We got to study four pages for every lesson. But he memorized everything before school. And he got to also correct for the teachers, the special dates. So he had this amazing ability, you know, but he couldn't like uh, solve our math equations, but we can, but we can, we can memorize history. Then he has abilities I don't have. I have abilities he don't have. We are normal, he's normal human. And there is something to shed light on that he was, he had the kindest heart in the whole class. Um, before, you know, a couple of days ago, I sent, uh, I sent uh, a survey on the group, right? So when I sent it, uh, there is my friend from Lebanon from another school. She directly replied to me. She said that this topic touched her heart because her, her uh, sister is a special need teenager. So I got the chance to speak to her sister. She has, uh, she can't speak properly, you know, but she has ability. It's really unique. 
she is interested in astrological signs. So whenever you tell, tell her what's your astrological sign, she could say everything about this. So uh, I will, uh, you know, she spoke to her in Arabic. I will translate to you. Okay, so I'm going to ask you 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 to ask Okay, so, so I asked her sister to ask her if uh, if she she was bullied and criticized by other people, what would her feeling be? So she said that she will she will feel indignified. And she will feel and she will feel really angry. And then I sent her some motivational words, and I ha I asked her another question. Uh, wait, I wanna. Hey, I asked her what does she think about inclusive classrooms and inclusive societies, like being included in with other people and uh, without criticizing her. So this is what she said. Actually, she's 18 years old. As you can see, she's barely speaking. She has some uh, some unproper uh, speaking. But she said, like, uh, she said, I think, thank you. And she said that she would love this. You know, she spoke with love because she has the kindest heart. They, those people, those innocent people, just know, just have special, unique abilities and just have the kindest hearts. And now this is a video done by Malak Azuddin. She is my teammate. Uh, wait. All are welcome. Come and see my classroom family. Together we learn, laugh and grow, always share what we know. Lunch, recess, and all through the day, we look out for each other in every way. Words matter, so we try to be kind, never leaving a friend behind. Loving and kind, thoughtful too, respect one another is what we do. All are welcome. Come and see my classroom family. And here's the last video done by uh, Jason. Oh, wait. What? How much? Wait.
Break other picture, match and equip already. This is kind of scenario in an inclusive education setting. And it should also be willing to embrace everyone wholeheartedly and promote the no child left behind policy. And last but not least, we preferred this survey. Actually, as you can see first, there I received just seven responses, although I sent it to like hundreds of people. And from this, we know that inclusion uh, education is not widespread and inclusion is not like a passion for others. So I hope today you, you learned a lot about inclusion. So here, as you can see, there are 14% of people that don't know what's inclusion. But uh, those uh, who define inclusion, they are all right. Here are some di diagrams, or whether if they would help a special needs student. So they said yes or maybe. Here, a hundred percent of them agree on uh, they would attend inclusive classes, and uh, like half, of, and twenty eight percent have never um, had a, a special needs student in their class. And this. Uh, this is the most important question I had in my survey. So what's inter your intuition? Oh no, okay. And here are, what's your intuition about students with a special need? So they said uh, special needs maybe lack the ability of focusing, but on the other hand, they have a great mind. They can be creative. They could be greatest people. If you go back to history, you know, Beethoven, we can't, he, his name, is marked in our minds till now, but he was deaf, but he's a musical art. He was deaf and a musical art. And we have a lot of extraordinary people with special needs. Wait. Yes, I still have the last one. Yeah, and here's the most important question. It was the last question. How could inclusive classrooms change society? So they said when people understand that we ain't be the same and it's normal to be different, all people will respect, care, love, and value each other. And it make a better society because as I said, because people have special powers that society can benefit from. They're intelligent. They just need support and motivation. This is the most important. And and now we'd like to end up with a song. It's about inclusion. Mm. Can we let that till the till the end, maybe? Okay, okay. It's okay. Nice, so nice, thank you. Nice. That was it. Um I really want to congratulate you. Um, Thank you. I don't know what to say. It's an amazing presentation, well prepared, um, well divided the role between uh, between uh, your teammates. Thank you so much. Um, let me now invite to the next team, um, Voyage the Universal, please. I guess now you're ready. <laughs> Hello everyone, we're team Voyage to the Universal. I'm Yim Shamoun, 15 years old, a student at ABC High School. And my teammates here are Yusuf and uh, Zainab. So can you please share the screen? And also uh, we have Mr. Muhammad Khalil and Ms. Ms. Mayabel. We'd like to say hello for them. Can you please, Ms. Ermi, can you please share the screen? So actually, the screen is with the uh, serum. You can please show them. Decision is typically made where it is hidden by bathing suits or decision is decision is typically made where it is hidden by bathing suits or undergarments. But it is important to realize that you will have a scar. A second incision is made around the navel to free it from surrounding tissue. The skin and fat layers above the abdominal wall are lifted upward to expose the abdominal muscles. Your surgeon will suture these muscles, pulling them closer together, which creates a flatter, firmer abdominal wall 
and a slimmer waistline. Is Miss Karina Once here? Once the muscles are tightened, the layer of skin and fat will be stretched back over the abdominal wall and a new hole will be created for your navel. Excess skin and fat that hang beyond the original incision Shereen, are I removed. Think you, uh, are you, are you we did the wrong video. Not, yeah, maybe. I think that's the... What do you want to present first thing? It's about country heritage, Miss Karin. Yeah, it's about the heritage. The PowerPoint presentation? Yeah, also there are videos I sent you maybe four, two interviews and two videos and a PowerPoint. So I will start with uh, the PowerPoint, yes? Yes. Okay. Okay, so as I told you, we're team back to the uh, to the universal Miriam Shamrone. We have here Muhammad Yusuf and Zainab Aidib and Mr. Muhammad Khalil and Ms. Uh, uh, Maybel. So can you please go to the first slide? Since we're talking about the heritage, let's first to know what's the meaning of heritage. A country's heritage is all the qualities, traditions, or features of life uh, there that have been continued ever many years and have been passed from one generation to another. Everything related to tra tradition, values, historical places, food, restored festivals, music, dances, clothes, etc., is considered as as a heritage of country. Now, Zainab, the stage is, your, is yours. Yes. Lebanon has a heritage almost as old as the earliest evidence of mankind. Lebanon has an Arab culture colored by Western influences. At different periods of its history, Lebanon has come under the domination of foreign rulers, including Assyrians, Babylonians, Greeks, Romans, and Ottomans. Even after everything, Lebanon has preserved most of its heritage and protected it over the years. Traditions values. Lebanese people have been known to, uh, have been known to be very hospitable to visitors. When welcoming guests, you have to shake hands first, hospitalize them with the popular Arab coffee, and before they leave, you have to give them coffee or chocolate as a way of showing respect, hospitality, and affection to the visitor. Food. The Lebanese cuisine is known for its delicious food recipes that have been passed down by generations. From kibbe, burghul, frakim, jaddara, falafel, knafe, halawat al jibn, layali lubnan, manaish, safiha, tutabuli, fatush, hummus, fatte, batata harra, wara anab, and much more. Also, you aren't Lebanese unless you eat pita bread with everything, or as we call it, khubuz arabi, which is something very special to us Lebanese and is part of Lebanon's heritage. <laughs> Historical places. Balba Castle, Saida Castle, Jaita Grotto, Biblos, uh, National Museum of Beirut, Pigeon Rocks, Hiram's Tomb, Kadisha Valley, Beit Din, Musa Castle, etc., are all famous Lebanese historical places that have been preserved for thousands of years. Festivals occasions. There are many popular festivals that have been celebrated in Lebanon over the over the past few years and since a very long time, such as Balbek International Festival, Biblis International Festival, Beit Din Art Festival, uh, Festival, and the list goes on. Lebanon is known for its outstanding festivals and occasions that are celebrated in a very special way. Most importantly, weddings, which are meant to be huge and include many tr traditional songs and dances, as well as some being three to seven events each night. Music, dancing. 
All famous Lebanese singers are a great part of Lebanon's heritage. Fayrouz, Sabah, Wadia Safi, Majid Arumi, etc. Were, were and are all amazing singers who have showed the world their talents over the years and become very popular. Dancing is also an aspect of the Lebanese heritage. We are mostly known for our traditional dafke, which has to be in every occasion. Zafi is also a traditional dance used as an opening in every wedding. Survey. Based on the statistics we have done, it appeared to be that almost 60% of the students know nothing about their country heritage. Some do know, but think they don't due to the lack of knowledge of what a heritage actually is. Most know about some of the traditions, foods, historical places, and clothes. Also, there was a great difference in the level of knowledge between students and teachers, meaning the older generation is still protecting its heritage in some way, but the young ones are slowly losing it piece by piece. Okay, Zainab, you were amazing. Thank you. Uh, by the way, we did an interview that we'll present uh, later. So now, Yusuf, are you ready? Yes, I am. Let's start. Okay, now we are talking about Indonesia heritage. Indonesian people have many traditions, such as, I'm sorry. It's, it's okay. Indonesian, Indonesian people have many traditions, uh, such as Rajab Festa, Feast Day of Nyepi, praying together and cremation and etc. This related to the various ethics and religions that exist in Indonesia. Indonesian people love to tolerate and help each other and they refuse any sort of discrimination. In addition, Indonesia is known as friendly touristic destination. People there are smiling and friendly to others, even they are foreigners. And because of ethics and province, Indonesia has various ethic food. One is well known is rendang. I really, really recommend you guys to try it. It is really, really delicious. I'll bet that. One portion won't be enough for you guys. Rendang is announced as the tastiest dish uh, on the world, followed by nasi goreng. Nasi goreng is from Indonesia too. In English, it is fried rice. It's also delicious. And then sushi on number three. Besides those two, Indonesia still has various tasty ethnic food, such as pampak, gado-gado, and many more. And FYI, there's an, uh, there is a unique thought of having dishes in, in some places in Indonesia, such as Java, one is regarded not to have breakfast, lunch, or dinner when he or she doesn't have rice in his or her menu. Sometimes noodle or cooked meat and many more. Although you are full because of bread, snack, or something else, since you don't consume rice, you are regarded that you have an uh, your breakfast yet. So here's Indonesia, no wonder you will have rice on your breakfast, lunch on your dinner also. And now we're talking about building. We are talking about temple. Indonesia has hundreds of temple. The famous one is Borobudur uh, on, the, on the right, I, I guess, on the right one. I've been there and the temple is very big it's about 2,500 meters square. Borobudur is a Buddhist temple. This temple was built in 70, 770 after, after century, and then later abandoned. When it was discovered at 1,000, at, I'm sorry, at 18 and 14, it was considered a ruin, like the second photo. You can see the second photo from the left one but then it was renovated to its origin. Besides temples, uh, there's also a historical mosque. It's uh, Masjid Agung. Masjid Agung Baitur Rahman, Aceh Darussalam. It survived from the tsunami on 2004. It was the only building left after the tsunami. The first picture, you can see that. And Indonesia also has many ethnic songs. Its province has its own song. There are Ilir Ilir from Java, Apar Ampar Pisang from Kalimantan, Ayam dan Lape from Sumatra, and etc. 
The song are kid songs at its province. Indonesia also has three has. I'm sorry, I'm kind of a bit nervous. Indonesia also has 352 ethnic dances that are from the 34 provinces. One of them is Ratu Jaro dance that has been performed in Asian Games 2018, opening Fiesta and in Indonesia was the host. Next, please. There are many festivals held in Indonesia to attract tourists, such as Tobalik Festival, Dayan Kultur Festival, Nyepi, and many more. They are held not only to attract the tourists, but to conserve the Indonesia heritage for the Indonesia generation. Next, please. Okay, I think it's Rim's part, so I'll give back the stats to you, Rim. Well, that's Zainab for Zainab. Are you ready? Yes. Yes, yes I'm okay. ready. The Great Wall of China is a huge part of its... Oh, sorry. Okay. The Great Wall of China is a huge part of its heritage, considering it is almost 3,000 3, years old. Marvels of Babylon, or known as the, hand, the Handing Gardens, were amazing sites described as paradise. Even though they were destroyed many years ago, they are still a site of, for tourism in Iraq. A great side of the heritage in each country is the wonders that are still preserved till, the, uh, till this day. Egypt is known for the Great Pyramid that was built around 2560 BC and is still protected till now. Imagine a crowd of 50,000 people in an oval-shaped building with 80, with 80 entrances. It's the famous Colosseum of Rome that was built in the year 100 AD and is still there. Okay, so this was the end of the PowerPoint, but we actually sent four videos. Can you please share them? Let me see where I can find the videos uh, because many students sent to me, but uh, I don't remember which one. Zainab, you sent? No. Maybe you can resend them. It's okay. From Rim? From, from who? Yeah. I... From Rim okay. Shimon, yeah. yeah. Rim, yes. Okay. Yeah, Rim Shimon. Mm -hmm. At this time, why don't we do something fun? So, are you guys ready? I'm really excited. Okay, yeah, so I'm ready. You, you want to share the video or do something fun before? What do you want, guys? It's up to you. Let's share the video. Okay, let's share the video.
That's all from the side, yes? Wow. Are you done? No, there's uh, some two videos else for uh, for uh, another country. Oh. oh. Mm. Yes, still two videos about the uh -huh. Yes, 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 yes. I I got I got up. Okay, no problem. This one, yes. Apa yang kamu ketahui tentang warisan Indonesia? Warisan Indonesia itu sangat luas. Jadi itu seperti kayak ya. Ada di sini ada tradisional seperti tari tradisional atau makanan tradisional yang itu bermacam-macam yang ada. Well, kalau menurut saya sendiri itu warisan negara Indonesia itu bermacam-macam. Kenapa bermacam-macam? Karena uh, di Indonesia itu memiliki banyak budaya, ada budaya orang Jawa, Bali, Kalimantan, sehingga itu tercipta seperti lagu daerah, makanan, dan permainan tradisional itu juga semakin bermacam-macam juga. Menurut saya warisan negara Indonesia yang saya suka adalah bagian makanan, makan terutama makanan makanan kecil. Yaitu kecentur madu Saya menikahinya karena Bumbunya enak dan pedas Menurut saya adalah dari mereka yang menyukai Makanan tradisional yang enak Karena makanan dari globalisasi yang Muncul terlalu banyak dan enak-enak Menurut saya itu Mereka kurang melestarikan Soalnya dengan masuknya budaya asing Mereka lebih tertarik dengan Budaya asing tersebut kalau menurut saya itu ada yang iya ada yang enggak kalau yang iya itu terutama di daerah kota itu kebanyakan masyarakat kurang untuk melestarikan budaya karena pengaruh globalisasi sedangkan untuk masyarakat, masyarakat desa yang belum terpengaruh dengan teknologi atau globalisasi contohnya di suku pedalaman itu menurut saya itu masih fresh atau masih pure gitu. जवान का रास्ता Great. Are you done? Wow, yeah. Really wow. <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. Thank you so much for your hard work and your presence here.
was an amazing presentation from you and nice videos. You seem like you did a really, really great job and hard work. Maybe before we continue with themes, we can uh, watch a video about Bike 2, yeah? Okay. To, um, to get back our memories from Bike 2, yeah. Okay, what happened in the video? Because the, the net went off. Uh, there's still Reem wants to share a game, if it's possible. Yeah. Please. Okay, you may share the game. Okay. Okay, so here I have questions and I'll ask some participants here to answer this. So let's start by Ms. Karina. Are you ready? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, I'll pick you a question. I hope you can answer it. Okay, this questions for you. They are easy questions, don't worry. You're so lucky, Miss Karina. Okay. Mm -hmm. Complete the sentence. Pizza and pasta are parts of which country's heritage? Pizza. No, tell what me did you say? repeat, please, because I cannot understand it. Okay, complete the sentence. Pizza and pasta are part of? Pasta and? Pizza and pasta, part yes. Of Italy. Which country is heritage? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. Next one here. Who wants to participate? Ms. Armina, are you there? Um, okay, yeah. Muhammad, can you answer? Yeah, of course. Okay, this question is for you. I hope it's hard. Oh my God. If it's easy, don't make it hard. <laughs> for my English, <laughs> I will tell you in French. <laughs> it's not easy, it's more than easy because you're Lebanese. I'll pick another one. Yeah, there we go. You can ask me. <laughs> Which country is specialized by its uh, permits? Which country? Uh, is of course, it's Egypt. In what? And I don't also, uh, okay. Sudan, yeah. Which country is specialized by its permit? Spanish. Yeah, I said, I said Egypt. Edit. Edit. Yeah. Okay, who, who answered? There are two answering. Both of them. <laughs> What's <laughs> okay, I think yeah. Mr. Mina answered Egypt. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, now okay. you say something. I don't understand. Egypt. Yeah, I said the uh, Egypt and also Sudan has um Yeah. Okay. Has parents, yeah. Okay, who's the next one? Who's the next one to answer here? I'll see the names. Angela, can you answer? Angela. Yes, I'm here. Yes. Yeah. I'll pick you a question. Okay. <laughs> nice question. Which country is known for its great wall? Which, which country is what? Is known for its great wall. Um, I guess Egypt. No. Great wall. Is known for its great wall. A very tall uh, wall. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess it. No. No. I don't know. <laughs> no. China? It's a, it's a China. Sorry. Oh, okay. I get it. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> Zainab, yes, is the the answer. Answer. yes. Okay. Zainab, this question is for you. Okay. Nice question. Complete the sentence. The template of goddess is a part of. Hence, country's what, name starts right? with C. Could you repeat it slowly, please? Okay. The template of goddess is a part of. Hence, the, 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 the name of the country starts with C. It's a country yeah. close to the Arab world. Yeah, yeah. Starts with C. Think. The language is also close to Arabic. Tunisia? You actually watched Tunisia. some of uh, Tunisia. Tunisia? No. You actually watched uh, some of its series. 
Tur Turkey. <laughs> no. Yay. Actually, I right. couldn't hear the question. It was better to write it in the chat box, you know, so that everyone could uh, could answer. Yeah. Okay, who wants to share in the last question? We have your last question. I'll pick. Okay, you can, you can, uh, you can ask it, it and um, we yeah, see you. Ask it and someone, if you know, then he'll say, it, okay? Yeah, yeah I'll ask it. If you feel who is first, go ahead. <laughs> These questions, please, no Lebanese can answer. Please. <laughs> okay. Okay, it's, uh, it's okay. obvious. Okay. <laughs> Okay, what is the intruder? Say the castle permits Debke Tabula. What is the intruder? Say the castle permits Debke Tabula. Yes, please, teach your name, Adam. <laughs> You're muted. Hello. Hello. Oh, no, no. I think you're wrong. <laughs> While permits are from the Egypt heritage. Thank you guys yes. for hearing us. I hope you liked our Thank presentation. You. Yeah, yes. we love the game. We're the best. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you Thank for this you. game to um, activate us and uh, give energy positive vibes. Yes. Thank great you so much, work, team. Thank you so much. Welcome. Uh, team, uh, great team. Um, let me invite now the next team, um, the pioneers, please. Welcome, the stage is yours. The pioneers, are you there? Yes, yes. Okay, so hi again. Hi for everyone. Angela, are you ready? Yes, definitely. Okay, so uh, I'm Angela, 14 years old student. Um, I really want to uh, present my team uh, with the, ch the teachers are Tul Zurek, uh, Ms. Amna Ahmad, and uh, for the students, Khulud, Angela, Hoyer, Naim, and Princess and Suweda. Nice to work with you all. Okay, up into sharing the video, please. There is no sound, I guess, yeah? Actually, there is no sound. Now, is it better? No, there is no, uh, no sound. And now? Um, Hello? No, no there is no sound. Mm -mm. Hello. Hi. When you share the screen, you have uh, you have an option to share the sound. There Hello. Are, uh, there are okay. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, please take the screen now and let me retry, please. Okay. You can share. You can share over. Hello. Hello, Mr. Naim. It's uh, it's your team turn, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, but, I'm uh, so but, but but really, I'm I'm working on on mobile. I need I need some friend to uh, to open the PowerPoint presentation on his laptop. My yeah, I my do. I do. Okay. Yes. Okay, please. Okay. Just to check the voice now, please. Do you see my screen, Hamad? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I do, Mr. Tour. I do, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's good. Perfect. 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 The sound is there, yeah. Fake media. Fake media or fake news is false or misleading information presented as news. Fake news often has the aim of damaging the reputation of a person or entity or making money through advertising revenue. So, what is a false information? Lots of these things you read online, especially in your social media feeds, may appear to be true. Often it is not.
false information is news, stories, hoaxes created to deliberately misinform or deceive readers. Usually, these stories can create either influence people's, uh, people's views, push a political agenda, or cause confusion, and can often be a profitable business for online publishers. So, what are the different types of information? False information can be categorized in two ways. Misinformation. Misinformation is the spread of false mistaken information that wasn't necessarily created to harm you by sharing and spreading information that is incorrect to make it credible. Disinformation. Disinformation is the form that was created to deceive, lie, or support either individual or social political groups. Agenda. It's based information like propaganda used cool for groups. brain agenda. It's based information like propaganda used for brainwashing, created with intent to harm you. Miss in disinformation are reaction, emotional response, and harm in action share content. It's easy to spread misinformation without even thinking about it when something triggers strong feelings in us. Sick and tired of seeing misinformation, never know who or what to trust, can't figure out what you've heard is true, feel duped. Want better tools to store of truth from fiction? Here's a quick guide to sorting of facts, waiting information, being knowledge online and off. First of all, check credentials. Look for base, check the sources, check the dates, and judge hard. It's never too late to seek out good information. These are stories that are deliberately fabricated to gain more website visitors and decrease advertising revenue for websites. Clickbait stories use sensationalist headlines to grab attention and drive click-throughs to the publisher's website, normally at the expense of the truth or accurately. Supermodels apply these three simple tricks to the young. Okay, so sorry if my voice was fast, but uh, the video was done like this, um, just uh, to make the time it's as it's about like I'm not fast, but the video was rapid. Okay. Not a problem. It's not a problem. Good job. Click attention and drive click-throughs to the publisher's website, normally at the expense of the truth or accurately. Supermodels apply these three simple tricks to look young, click to know what they are. Honestly, everyone or every website creates this thing to make people or the reader click on their websites. What are the consequences of fake news? First, it leads to the distrust in the media due to the misleading content posted on social media. In addition to undermining the democratic process, also fake news can create a platforms for harmful conspiracy theories and hate speech. Finally, it can result the spread of false or discredited science, where many science facts are being manipulated by many people that use them to fool others. How to avoid spreading misinformation? To start with authority, we should ask ourselves who is the author and where did the item originate? The second way is accuracy, where the accurate information that's free from errors is considered more reliable. In addition to objectivity, that is to check to see if the information is presented with the least amount of prejudice. Last but not least, timeliness, where we should ask ourselves when is the information first published.
have to thank you, ladies, for this uh, valuable information. And now we have to move uh, to uh, uh, another PowerPoint. Yes. For hire and Naim and at the end, a Google form done by another student who is Suede. Yeah. It's your turn now, Nine. You can start, please. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you all for all friends for this chance to introduce myself. Uh, I am Mr. Naim Aladram. I am uh, an uh, electrical engineer, but uh, I'm here. Uh, I'm glad to be your friend in uh, in, uh, in in this uh, group uh, to have friends all, all over the world for uh, uh, more cultural uh, friendship. I, I, I will start about the fake media and propaganda. We can define uh, the term uh, fake news uh, that, uh, that is, that, that term came from different, different uh, things to differ, mean 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 different things to different people. Okay, uh, it's not important about definitions. I have I have to move to how to stop fake media or fake news. We have to consider the the the, the source. We have to we have to consider the source. What 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 is the source of our of our uh, post that we that we can take in our Facebook uh, page or our Twitter page. Uh, who who the source who 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 give us this information? Uh, number two, we have to read more about this uh, this issue or this or this uh, topic. Number three, we have the, the, to check the author. If, if we got some topics in, uh, in internet or Facebook, we have to check who post the, this, this topic. We have, we have to uh, combine uh, many sources, not one source, we can uh, make different and multi sources, and we have to, to check the date. We may got some news that 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 are very old from four or five four or five years. Uh, does does the does the uh, the news are are, are a joke or uh, or something? We have we have to ask uh, older experts in in this in this field. This is this is called this is called misinformation and fake news. Thank you. I uh, I have to uh, end now, and my friends will continue with with you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Too much, Naim. I know that you prepared a lot, but actually we, we got strict to the time. You said that you have to yeah. uh, you have to finish yeah. within ten minutes, and we respect our time and others' time. So that's why we yeah, try hard you. to focus on specific slides. So thank Shukran you too Eli. much. Shukran thank you. Shukran and now thank we have you. to move to higher. Are you ready, higher? Yes, miss. Yeah. Go on to your slides. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Ayiri. I'm from Indonesia. So I will to uh, explain uh, how to identify identify which is hot news and which is uh, genuine news. Here is the explanations. The first is be careful with prov provocative titles. Hot news uh, often use provocative sensational titles, 
for example, by directly painting the finger at certain parties. The contents can also be taken from official media news, but they are changed to create the perception that, that the hoax maker wants. Therefore, if you encounter news with provocative titles, you should look for reference in the form of similar news from official online site. Then compare the content are the same or different. And number and seconds, fact check and the authentic of the photo. Notice where notice where the news comes from and who are source. This is the form of official institutions such as governments, website, or other official institutions. You should not be quick to believe if the informants come from active activists of mass organizations, political figures or observers pay attention to the balance of new source. If there is only one source, the new source, if there is only one source, the reader cannot get the full picture. Another things to observe is the difference between news based in the fact and opinions. In the current era of digital technology, it is not only content in the form of text that can be manipulated, but also under content in the form of photo or videos. There are times when, when, I'm sorry, when fake news makers also edit photo to provoke readers, that way to check the authenticity of photo, can be using the Google search engine, namely by drag and dropping to the Google image search file, the search result we present similar image found on the internet so that they can be compared. Thank you, Hayar, for the valuable information too. And now we have to move to the last slide, which is prepared by Suedi, are you here? I'm Suedi, a nurse student from Turkey. Today, we prepared a presentation on fake media. Social media has such a dramatic impact on the ways we interact with one other. Another, social media platforms have connected us to one another in new and impactful ways. Unfortunately, there is a dark side to social media, fake news. At the end of our presentation, I prepared a survey that may help me in making a research about our topic, which is fake media. So I kindly, I want to take one minute of your time to fulfill it. I will share with you the link of the survey on the chat box so you can go and fulfill it. Thanks in advance. That's all for my group, Muhammad. I have to thank Ms. Amna also for following students with me, caring for them, helping them. Actually, we have about five students of different countries around the world. At the beginning, we found it difficult to communicate uh, concerning time, duration, language. <laughs> Uh, however, um, we feel now that we are really one team, one family. Uh, I have to thank them all, uh, Ms. Amna too. And I have to thank you leaders also, uh, Muhammad, the others, and all the participants that really presented today amazing and fabulous presentation. Your efforts really blessed. Thank you all. Thank you, Ms. Batu. I want also to thank you, Ms. Batur, thank for you. a really, really great presentation. You're such a great team. And also, I want to thank you for organizing your presentation to fit with time, 10 minutes. Um, you did a really, really great job. Um, now let's move to the last team, um, surgeon's team, please. Yeah, we're ready. I just want to share my screen. Can you stop sharing, Ms. Batur, please? Yeah, thank you. Yes, you can start. Yeah, can you see my, my screen? Yeah, yeah, we can see. Okay, so plastic surgeries. I'm with team seven, surgeon's team. 
Plastic surgeries are taking an important role in a lot of people's lives, either women or men. Internet is spotting an image in every single person that, it's, that everything and everyone should be perfect, where they are going into a whole new era. Plastic surgery is a measure that involves re restoration and reconstruction of the human body. It can be divided into two main categories, reconstructive surgery and cosmetic surgery, and both are considered as subspecialties. Well, what are the types of plastic surgeries? We have liposuction, rhinoplasty, which is nose, nose job, eyelid surgery, tummy tuck, facelift, ear pinning, hand surgery, breast reconstruction, hair transplantation, dermabrasion, plastic weight, uh, platys, <laughs> plasty, lip augmentation, microsurgery, chin augmentation, botulinum toxin, which is Botox, lower body lift, and much more. Well, after we set the types, you may ask how much may it cost? To talk about the cost of cosmetic surgeries, the least cost may be $2,000 and it can reach to $10,000 to $20,000. Simple surgeries as labiaplasty costs $2,840 while the mommy makeover reaches to $20,000. Moreover, the non-surgical cosmetic procedures may start at 400 and reach to maximum about $2,000. Botulinum toxins, which is Botox, costs $408, where the non-surgical skin tightening costs $2,143. Statistics of common plastic surgeries. As we mentioned the types of plastic surgeries, we may ask what are the most common ones? According to 2021 statistics, people are mostly going into certain types of cosmetic surgeries that are largely popular between them people such as facelift uh, with approximately a number equal to 2,043,000 um, people, liposuction about 2,000, 211,000 people, breast augmentation, uh, neck lift, dermabrasion, tummy tuck, uh, with certain also statistics. Technolo technological role. In the previous few years, technology is taking place in all majors and fields, where its occupation is taking a serious place during work by saving time and much more. So how did technology take place in cosmetic surgery fields? First, we have augmented reality. Augmented reality is a technology that shares the image of the real object or scene on a computer screen to clarify its vision for the doctors during the surgery, where smart glasses are used in this process. You can see here in the picture how augmented reality is showing on her face like a piece of maybe a um, muscle or something and then they use this glass uh, this um, smart glasses the 3d image 3d image for the facial surface and computer tomography scans to get to to get you a 3d stimulations of the ideal final results after it gives the information of the underlying facial bones for each patient in the image here we have you can see how the doctor is uh, clarifying in a 3D image for his patient. We have the micro devices. Micro devices enable surgeons to conduct microsurgery that allows for tiny incisions and barely uh, scarring. This technology is helping create better, safer and realistic final results. The doctors in the adjacent photo, um, you can see what he is specifically seeing, seeing in, by using this micro devices, how tiny um, things this device can totally reach. We have radio frequency. This technology is used for skin enhancing treatments. It works on collagen boosting effects of microneedling were substantially increased with benefits, including visible reduction of wrinkles and scars. Ultrasonic rhinoplasty. It's a new method for precisely sculpting the nasal bones during rhinoplasty procedure, which is nose job. 
where it allows the surgeon to sculpt the bone with the aid of high frequency ultrasonic oscillations, while the surrounding soft tissue is preserved, which means less bruising, less swelling, and a quicker recovery. What is the future of technology? Well, a question pops to mind. What's the future of plastic surgery? Nowadays, huge amounts of teenagers and adults, even though kids are facing obese and abnormal weight according to their age and being too lazy for diet program and exercising. So the main task for the future of plastic surgeries is fat reduction and radical new techniques have made it much easier than ever to shed a few extra pounds that that can wait, uh, that resist diet and exercise. One of them is cool sculpting. This technique is a new procedure that destroys fat cells by selectively, selectively cooling them, as shown here in the adjacent photos. Here, I just wanted to add some extra information. Uh, recent process, uh, progress in plastic surgeries has been rapid and many new techniques have been developed, where only 3% of surgical procedures are performed by robots, although 15% of all operations use, uh, uses robotic support or assistance in US 2020. And also, uh, I just wanted to mention that Miami, Florida took its first place in having the most plastic surgeons. In the second place, we have Salt Lake, Utah, followed by LA Los Angeles in the third place of having the most plastic surgeons in the area. And that's it. I just want Ms. Armina uh, to help me with the videos I've sent. Ms. Armina, are you here? Yeah, please. Decision is typically made Uh, Ernie, can you share the sound as well, please? Is there sound? Shemina, we can't hear. The, uh, it's okay. The it's the video. The video is the, just a three D image. It's um, three, a three D yeah, image of how uh, of how the uh, surgeries uh, are done. Also, yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. No problem. Yeah. It's okay now. No, no. Let me share. Okay. Your... Yeah, From and uh, one of my teammates also sent me a video. I will share or not? No, no, I said no. Okay. Lifted upward to expose the abdominal muscles. Your surgeon will suture these muscles, pulling them closer together, which creates a flatter, firmer abdominal wall and a slimmer waistline. Once the muscles are tightened, the layer of skin and fat will be stretched back over the abdominal wall and a new hole will be created for your navel. Excess skin and fat that hang beyond the original incision are removed. Drainage tubes are usually placed in the abdomen through tiny holes below the incision allowing fluids to escape as you heal. The incisions will be sutured and bandages will be applied. And the second one, yes? Your nose is too big. Your lips, lips don't fit your face. You look too fat or you look too skinny. Wait, wait, wait. My project isn't about bullying. It's about plastic surgery. So what's the relation between them? Bullying is one of the main causes that forces a person to do a plastic surgery. So. What are other uh, causes for plastic surgeries? First, some people do plastic surgeries to look more beautiful or, for example, after being jealous from any artist or from any other person or uh, to become more confident after being bullied. Moreover, sometimes uh, someone's look facilitates being famous uh, since they attract uh, audience attention. Uh, for example, uh, here there are several pictures for several famous people who changed after their plastic surgeries 
Actually, most of famous people undergo plastic surgeries. Uh, last but not least, another reason for doing plastic surgeries is to look younger. For example, Kindy Jackson uh, sets world plastic uh, with the world record with 52 plastic surgeries. She is 66 years old woman. Look at her. Does she really look 66 years old? Hell no. And now, what are the advantages of plastic surgeries? Many people ask if plastic surgery uh, changes your personality. So the answer whether if it does or not is an astounding yes. Improving your self-confidence and self-esteem is one of the positive side effects that are unexpectedly welcome after undergoing plastic surgeries. In addition, it improves your breathing after a nose reshaping surgery, for example. These are the advantages of uh, applying plastic surgeries. What are the disadvantages of plastic surgeries? However, there are several disadvantages of plastic surgeries, such as organ damage, nerve damage, blood clots, blood loss, and infection. In my opinion, if you feel that you need a plastic surgery, or you feel that there's something that uh, makes you uncomfortable, then take it off. But don't do it for silly reasons like satisfying others because it might be dangerous. Oh, are you done? Yeah, I am. Um, yeah. I just want to thank my teammates, Mariam Bazzi and Anissa Abtarina. Unfortunately, maybe they couldn't join. And also the teachers of my team, uh, Dr. Tahir Hussain and Dr. Hayat Hasni. Thank you so much for being with us. And that's it. And now it's my turn to thank you, Sergeant's team, for being with us, for being marvelous for giving an outstanding presentation. I think now we are done. Um, all the teams have, have shown us what they have. So um, I wanna thank you all for being with us. It was a pleasure to see your wonderful presentations, really outstanding ones, special ones as always. And now let's say goodbye and meet again in, a, in the next sessions of Biker where love, happiness, enthusiasm only exist. Goodbye, and see you in the next session. Congratulations to all. Goodbye. See you on 8th of March. Goodbye, Goodbye yeah. dear. Have a warm night. Don't forget, night. 8th of March. <laughs>